continue to have a blessed service.
is a permanent reminder of their devotion to God and SRPC. You may also support this effort by fully contributing the SRPC building fund. Contributions to the building fund can also be made by visiting the SRPC website and clicking on the donation button. SRPC all in 2022.
Instagram. We'll let uh, people come in. It's tight, but it's right, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, again, we want to welcome you to our service. Our beloved Lent begins next Wednesday, March the 2nd. Amen. And we'll be uh, providing the service via Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, you'll get the links for both of those uh, later on this week. But please, man, please sir, join us online for uh, our Lenten services. And uh, we're going to really enjoy uh, walking with Christ as he is walking to uh, the cross and to the empty tomb. Praise the Sunday service. Amen. Uh, to this afternoon at 5 o'clock, y'all. 5 o'clock. You 10 times better is having a gospel concert. Let's play it down for that, amen. 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 Reverend James Wiles, who does a lot for the community, we want to support this event. And they have a very special brother. Is going to be the MC. I love this brother, amen. Trustee Christopher Harris, amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's come out and support at 5 o'clock. Uh, there's going to be great music, great singing, and great jazz, no more horns. Well, I can't say that real fast. But anyway, um, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. A really good uh, time in the Lord, and it will be benefiting a man who does so much for the community. Let's come out at 5 o'clock and support. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, real quick, we have, uh, before I get to the preacher of the hour, uh, I just want to remind Daryl once again that this is for Sunday, and it is, if you have any change, amen, you can put your change in the bucket. Right? But, listen, y'all, I got good news. If you forgot your change, that bucket takes a folding money. It takes tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, lots of uh, checks, T bills, diamond rings. It takes all that kind of stuff. So you can put it all in the bucket. Amen. Uh, one more announcement. I'm gonna have you glad about this one. Uh, we are blessed to have the preacher of the hour, Reverend Doctor Felicia Brown Haywood. She loves the word. She loves God's people. Yeah. And brother, we're going to get a word from the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We are going to get, come on, y'all. We're going to get a word from the Lord. Let's pray to God. Let's stand up and pray to God. Brother. Their 
children to read it. It is so important yes. that we learn language skills, vocabulary skills, yes. and writing skills, particularly between the ages of five and eight years old or up to third grade. It is so, so important um, that you, as adults, read too. Because when our children see us reading, don't take it for granted. You know, they watch and they listen. But it's more about what you do in front of them. And so they will pick up those habits. Their vocabulary development, their analytical thinking skills are so critical. Because just as we move to exercise the bones that I need to do more of, we need to read because that exercises the muscle of the brain so that we become more analytical and that we want to have a desire to research more. So thank you so very much. Great job, great job. Well, real quick, um, can you see what God is doing in our congregation? How He's growing us through our youth. And come on, praise God, He's growing us through our youth. And again, after service, uh, please, uh, uh, mothers, parents, grandparents, uh, line the kids up after service and uh, receive the books. You wonder why we do these things, y'all. This is wonder why we do these things. Because we're in South Rochester Baptist Church. What the love of Christ is. Right. Amen. And beloved, we're going to move right into something that's a very joyous time in our church. Amen. When we receive new members into the fellowship. I'm going to call on the chairman of our deacon ministry. He can make us lead us in that process. <laughs> Praise Lord Church. Praise Lord Church. Praise Lord. Oh, man. Be here one more time to take in new members. All right, this at this time, Sister Marquisa Majors, would you come forward? And Sister Dawn Moss. Marquisa, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. She came to us, I believe, that uh, with, uh, with Deaconess Diane Jones. I think they, they met at the uh, hair salon or the uh, female shop. Why not? <laughs> and uh, Deaconess Jones informed her about the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah. And she was so impressed, apparently, by what she heard that she started visiting with us. Amen. And she was so impressed with us that, that she wants to join us at this time. And Sister Dawn Moss, we've seen here at our services. Our <laughs> and uh, she has been visiting with her son, and uh, her son is a candidate for baptism. So we do have had the opportunity to counsel with Sister Marquisa and Sister Dawn. And as a result of our counseling sessions, we uh, would like to uh, recommend that Sister Marquisa Majors and Sister Dawn Moss become full-fledged members of the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church. That's the recommendation coming from the deacons. What is your pleasure? <laughs> Brother Deacon, I would say that we accept the motion for second? Amen. We move to properly seconded that Sister Marquisa Majors and Sister Dawn Moss become full-fledged members of the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed by saying nay. None but the devil. Amen. 
Uh, we're going to do the right hand associate starting on that side, coming across. And you know, we're still in COVID, so let's do the elbows. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember the, remember the protocol. <laughs>
Sophia Thompson, and I'll be reading Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, from the New International Version text. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were buried. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. The word of the word of God for the people of God. Amen. We will now have an intercessory prayer by my mom and my tea, Alison. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's my baby. <laughs> Amen. So as we go into this favorite time of being one with the Lord, the same enthusiasm you had when the two members joined, have that same enthusiasm in going into prayer. Keep that energy. Because that energy moves mountains. That energy is building solid rock. That energy is healing people. And that energy will bless somebody else. So keep that praise going on. Because that's what God wants. Because if you think you're going to heaven and going to sit still, you got another thing coming. It's going to be noisy. It's going to be loud. Like Tina in the back. It's going to be loud. Amen. So you better get used to it. But have that energy as we go into the presence of the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you for allowing two members to join Solid Rock. Not only that, we thank you for that land that you're building a church on. We have the energy of praise and thankfulness because you brought us here to allow us to worship one more time. One more week we got over. One more day we got to thank you. Just in case we don't have another. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name. We lift our hands to say thank you one more time. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you for this space that we have. We thank you for sending us back to where we started to remind us of where we're going. Because that makes a difference to keep reminding us that we never should stop praising and glorifying your name. Yeah. Lord, we encourage Reverend Felicia as she preached yeah. to encourage her to send that energy to her to let her know that we're listening and we want to hear from you. Yeah. Lord, so we thank you. We want that energy all the time despite what we're going through. We have the energy to know that your hand is wrapped around us with love. So encourage us, love us, keep us. Let us know that patience is a virtue, but we never give up because we know that you're going to be there. So we thank you as we take this moment to just praise your name in our own space to say thank you, Lord, one more time lift our hands to give a shout, to clap our hands, to say thank you, Lord, because it makes a difference and it moves. So we thank you. We glorify you. We want that love, that continuous grace that you never see us fail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
can everyone bow their heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you asking to bless this offering, bless the ones that were able to give, and bless the ones who were not able to give. Let, the, let it do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
that the Lord can change your life. Why don't you say everything has changed for me? The choir so graciously proclaimed that through Jesus, everything can change. Lord, prepare me to be assigned to Politics. 
And so in those, in that thank you card that you all received, you also received the I will vote pledge from my mother. <laughs> so on March the 10th, she would have been 100 years old. Wow. So on memorial of my mother and the memorial celebration, this I will vote pledge on March the 10th, I ask you to make the pledge. If you're not registered to vote, to register to vote. Amen. If you are registered to vote, to vote, make that pledge on March the 10th that I will vote. Amen. If you're registered and you will vote, and I on March the 10th, uh, 2022, I'd like for you to make the pledge to enlist 10 other people to vote. Amen. And if you gotta go pick them up, or if you need me to pick them up, call me and let me know. So I expect that that memory of my mother will hold fast in your hearts. March the 10th, make sure you make your pledge. God is good. Yes. Somebody said all the time. Yes. Amen, amen. You heard, I don't. I know we don't have a long time, so I'm hurry up, that's okay. <laughs> you heard, read into our hearing. Wait a minute, first of all, did not that choir minister today? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Did not our young people serve the Lord today? Yes. Somebody else said in their seat, and I said, that's the church of today, y'all. Go and what? Yeah. 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 All right now. All right. We got some Bible readers in the house. I bless the Lord for that. So, wait a minute. But how about the worship? Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. She already know. She already yeah. know. We got it like that. She already know. I bless the Lord. Minister. Oh. MIT, <laughs> almost so. Oh I thank you for that intercessory prayer. You musicians, y'all did y'all thing like that all the way You did this directress. And all those who are gathered in this house today to worship and lift the Lord up like you never did before. You heard read it into your hearing, Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Uh, one through eight, but I just want to lift up one verse of that pericope for our teaching today. Amen. And that's verse number eight. But I suggest that when you go home, you read all 66 books of Isaiah. How about that? It's, it's a good read, y'all. It's a good read. Amen. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. So I'd like to use for some my theme today, getting to your yes. Getting to your yes. Yes, a three letter word when given as a response can be transforming and yield more than our infinite minds could ever think or imagine. When you stop to think about it, there are moments throughout our lives that invite us to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that three-letter word that is a function word to express assent or agreement. And our immediate response recognizes the word yes as an approval of something. And if we dig a little deeper, the word yes means a consent as a course of action. What our text is tailored to teach us today through the lens of the prophet Isaiah is what is required to get to your yes in a no-centered world. Well, that's good. That's good. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> this life-transforming event of Isaiah allows us to peer deeper into a time when a yes was given in a no world. Reading the first five books of Isaiah, it gives us clarity, clarity to the no kind of world he finds himself in in chapter 6. Chaos all around. There were wars, and there were wars brewing. People were going astray. Lawlessness. The power of the, the more powerful threatening the less powerful. Look at that. 
our 21st century experiences mirrors the experiences of Isaiah in 770 BC. Dig deeper with me as we travel through, through our spirit-filled imagination from 21st century Harrisburg, PA, to Judah in 770 BC. If you critically think about it, you will see how God strategically orchestrates situations, settings, and seasons in our life, whereby we who are failing to recognize the yes required of God can view it through the lens of Isaiah during this time in his life. I'm talking about those seasons, settings, and situations that we can and that we are flawed and failing and fleshy can encounter and be encountered by a God in an amazing and undeniable way. An encounter that is so incredible, it redefines us, it reshapes us, it reorients us, and it even reintroduces us to the possibilities of God's plan for our lives. Through the lens of Isaiah, God explodes through his glory, exposing himself to Isaiah and to us, not for the sake of saying, didn't we have church today? But ultimately, the encounter is designed to inspire and motivate us to pursue passionately his plan for our lives and to live courageously what God has designed us to be. So you see why the, the sermonic selection was so appropriate. Deacon Haywood, when I'm talking about God's glory, I'm not talking about an ambiguous concept. No Reverend Keys and Pastor Keys, the other Reverend Keys. I'm talking about the splendid, majestic presence of God. Reverend Dr. Gastons, I'm talking about the splendid, majestic yes. presence of God. Yes, yes, yes. Deaconess Professor Mickens, I'm talking about <laughs> revealing God to us in a form that can be experienced but never contained. Woo. You see, the Hebrew word for glory in this context means heavy, mm. weighty. Mm. It had to do with the fact that God is so immense. So colossal, yes. so enormous, yes. so incredible, yes. so inconceivable yes. until the flawed, yes. contaminated yes. mind cannot possibly serve yes. as an incubator to his greatness or his reign. Yes. Yet, MIT hard, because of God's gracious and immeasurable way of managing his relationship with us, he allows us in our weakness to have some semblance of understanding him because he wants to be in relationship with us, y'all. Yeah. He wants to use us. Yeah. Yeah. Church, God wants us to be his vessels of glory and grace yeah. on yeah. this earth. Yeah. So God orchestrates moments, moments in corporate worship, yeah. moments in fasting and praying, moments in our closet time, moments in adversities, Moments when we encounter him that's so amazing and so undeniable, we are willing to acknowledge that he is God, no matter what nobody else say about there is no God. In these moments, we find ourselves willing to conform to his image. Unfortunately, as we survey the state of worship today, I am fearful that many churchgoers have turned worship into a microwavable experience where people come in like a drive-through, get what they want, and leave without ever encountering the presence of God. They come thinking about all the things that they have to do, all the things and places they have to hurry to when they get out of church. But for real, for real, every now and then, God will create a moment in your life when you cannot hurry. When you cannot hurry and get things off. God will create a moment in our lives 
when we must massage our consciousness in his presence. Until he sneered in our character. Mm. And we will never be the same person again. Mm. Listen, at some point in your life, you need to have an encounter with it our eternal God, oh, yeah. that is so amazing that you start shouting and throwing up both your hands. Yeah. An encounter that is so yeah. splendiferous yeah. that you discover destiny, yeah. you discover your purpose, yeah. and you discover your moment to say yes. Come on, yeah. Yeah. It's the moment when you are willing to go through H-E double hockey stick yeah. to become whatever God is exposing you to be. Yeah. Now, Pastor, I wonder if I'm talking to anybody here today. Because last week, if you all were listening, you heard Pastor talk about the ministers in training mm -hmm. and the contributions they were making to our body. And he inferred, if you were listening, that there are others who God is summoning mm -hmm. for a yes. All right now. All right now. All right, right now. All right now. All right now. Amen. Whether you've been in church 30 days, 30 months, or 30 years, Isaiah's moment is tailored to teach us some things about getting to our yes. Yeah. The fact of the matter is the, re the revealed presence of God, the revealed presence of our God was omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. God could never be treated so lightly. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, too many people relegate God to a weekend encounter. Mm -hmm. This is very scary, y'all, because yeah. that means we are missing the genius of God. Mm -hmm. And therefore, missing the reason why we exist. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we find ourselves filling the God spaces with our own stuff. With a life journey that creates more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves pursuing great relationships that are more burdened than blessing. Mm -hmm. We travel on trying something that is inauthentically consistent with who we are and who we are uniquely made yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. And we go hard after these things. Hard. Missing all of God. God orchestrates moments that you cannot ignore. A moment that will clarify you, a moment that will clean you up, a moment that will focus you, that will inspire you and give you a sense of undeniable compassion for something greater. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God wants to show you who you are by showing us who he is. Look at the text. Look what we're learning from Isaiah's moment. Isaiah was a temple worshiper. But when you dig a little deeper, it becomes obvious that Isaiah was a temple worker. They had not yet had his God-transforming, purpose-centering moment. And even though he went to church every Sabbath, <laughs> the text informs us that God had to reconstruct his life uh -huh. to get him to a moment where he would say yes uh -huh. to God. Isaiah says this, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Let me memorize that for you. King Isaiah says, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Oh, okay, okay, somebody got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isaiah notes that the year the distraction was moved, he saw God. Somebody said, distraction? Come on. Then you read your Sunday school lesson? I did. But I read the next page, too. You see, King Uzziah was a good king, and he ruled for over 50 years. But when you read more of your Bible, you will see that King Uzziah was a good king until he started trying to do his thing outside of the will of God. Amen. Amen. Trying to do his thing besides what God has purposed him to do. He took it upon himself from, from, to, from, 
from serving in the palace, which was his call, to try to serve in the temple, which was not his call. He was called to kingly duties, not Christian duties. Uzziah's, I'll do it my way, actions disrupted the order of the nation. And God allowed King Uzziah to be afflicted with leprosy. Wow. And e eventually, King Uzziah died in the life of Isaiah. Look at the text. Note, in the year King Uzziah died, the distraction was removed. And God showed himself to Isaiah. Point one for you note takers. There are some things in our lives that has to cease. Some things that have to die in order for you to see God's purpose in your life. Maybe to set you up, God has to free you as you expose yourself to those things and all those things you keep putting weight on. Just maybe you keep looking at something that you've elevated to an idol status. And you even realize that you're trusting it more than you're trusting God. Church, we have to be careful that we don't celebrate the blessing over the blesser. We can't get caught up in what's created over who created it. Amen. After the death of, of the distraction, in that moment of Isaiah's encounter, point two and three, the text tells us that cleansing occurred out of confession. <laughs> cleansing occurred out of confession. I found out in my own life confessing that is not a popular point in church because most of us are territorial about our sin. <laughs> not here at South Rock Missionary Baptist Church, but some of those folks that pastor knows <laughs> legitimize and justify their sins by saying, ain't nobody perfect. I wonder. Is there anybody else here besides me who has used that phrase? And if we were to be honest with ourselves, we would say, mm, I used it sometimes. I used it once. Or, yep, I use that phrase all the time. You see, because in your honesty, God will put a moment in your life where you actually have to clean up some stuff in your life. I am reminded growing up at the Friendship Baptist Church in South Philadelphia where the pastors threw their handkerchiefs. And I remember Reverend Edwards and Reverend McKnight would preach sermons about sanctification and holiness. Mm, how often do you hear those sermons? I learned that there were some non-negotiables when serving God. But somehow, we have become a generation who rides in figuring out how to manage morality. Managing it in a flimsy manner. Yet the word of God tells us that there are some spiritual non-negotiables. Isaiah is showing us how God will place you in a moment and require you to make some of those changes. Uh -huh. hmm. You can't come to church every Sunday and go home the same way. Well, well, my Lord. Amen. Amen. One of these old Sundays, yes. you ought to go home mad at yourself mm -hmm. that you are even living the life that you're living. Yeah. Non-negotiable. Yeah. You should not come in here every Sunday knowing that there are some things in your life that are out of order, you should be uncomfortable because you need to confess to God for your cleansing. You and, and, and I and, and we need to confess and say, whatever isn't right in me, whatever does not honor you, whatever does not please you, I need you to show me for the sake of your glory. 
Friends, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to live a life that's trifling and trivial and trite. Amen. I want to live a life that is accountable mm. and righteous yes. so I can say yes, yes. to God. Yes. Do what you got to do. Yes. There comes a time when you have to confess and say, Lord, I want, I want to do the right thing. I want to be obedient. Yes. Lord, I don't want to come to church and say, I came to church just because I came to church. Yeah, yeah. I want to come to church because I want my life to line up with your word. Yeah, yeah. Like Isaiah, I want to be changed yeah, and transformed yeah, yeah. so whatever isn't right in me, yeah. have your way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Show me who I am not yeah. so you can show me who you want me to be. Yeah. Clean up my life, Lord, for your word. Start from the inside out. Yes. But because you see, Christina, I don't I don't want hair and nails and clothes and don't have character. Are there any other Isaiahs in the house who will confess for cleansing? Who will say to God, whatever you got to do with me in order to line up with your word. Lord, I say yes. Yes, yes, yes. There's only like four on this side. <laughs> okay, in order, whatever you got to do, in order for me to line up with your word, Lord, I say yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Let the Holy Ghost convict you of the stuff that's not right in your life. Yes. Understanding and knowing that some of that stuff we need God to give us the strength and the courage yes. to deal with. Yes. Hear me, y'all, because eventually who you are not willing to be will work against who you're supposed to be. I'd be scared if I was your Amen. Isaiah had an encounter that changed him. It changed him to the point that the Bible said, he said, woe is me. I, I just wonder if anyone has ever had a worship experience like Isaiah. And the kind that he had in this encounter, where instead of jumping up and down and shouting and running up and down the pupils and spinning all over and throwing break dancing on the floor, instead of that kind of shouting, you ended up crying and wailing because you knew you were still in a place that was not pleasing to God. Church today might not be a day of shouting and jumping. It may be a moment of confession and cleansing. Today might be that day that you declare, God, I need you to work on me because my relationship is not right. God, I need you to work on me because my attitude is not right. God, I need you to work on me because my communication is not right. I need you to work on me because my behavior is not right. Work on me, Lord, because I have anger in my heart. Work on me, Lord, because I've got unforgiveness in my life. I've got jealousy and envy all in my veins. And I don't want to leave here today with issues that I know you can deal with. The text said confession came. Then cleansing came. Then confession came. You got to confess about those things that God is telling you to do without pointing your fingers to others. Looking at what you think others should do. Because you know the saying, you point that one thing at somebody else and how many point back at you? And not only and not only seven. But sometimes you can't see because you got a telephone pole in your eye. Y'all know, y'all get that when y'all get that. Some stuff that's happening in your life. It's because you need to deal with the stuff that's happening in your life. Here's an Isaiah 6 note for your desktop. 
God wants to do so much more with us. But so often God is handcuffed by our unwillingness to make lifestyle changes that are consistent with his design. The year King Uzziah died, Isaiah had an encounter that caused him to cease focusing on the distractions and to confess and confession led to cleansing. And point number four, and I'm going to sit down after this, his cleansing, his confession, his ceasing all led to the clarity of his call. Mm -hmm. Isaiah's three seeds got him to his yes. All of a sudden, a church goer who thought he was doing right discovered that he had so much more to do for God. I'm not making this up. God speaks rhetorically and asks the question, whom shall I send? Who is going to go for me? And if you glance over that question in the text, it seems like God is directing that question to Isaiah. But God did not say, Isaiah, will you go for me? No. God said, Isaiah, he did not say that. God said, who will go? Who am I going to send? Church clarity of call comes through your cleansing distractions when you get rid of them, when you confess, and then you can see clearly what God wants you to do. That's what happened to Isaiah. So Isaiah answered the question here. I am, Lord, send me. Another note for your desktop. Some of us have been living our life out of order. Out, totally out of order of our assignment. You've been living based on what you think you need to be doing. Based on what benefits you. Based on what makes you feel comfortable. But it may be someone here today that once you have this encounter with God, he will redefine yes, you, yes. reconstruct you, yes. and the purpose of your life, and you will currently be doing what it is that God will have you to do. Yes, yes. And not, it may not be what you think you've been designed to do. Your ministry will look different, however, when God gets a hold of it. It might take a day, a month, a year, but your encounter with God can redirect, restructure, redefine the purpose of your very life. An encounter with God will reconstruct you to the point that stuff you never thought you was able to do, now you find yourself doing it. But it's not because of you, it's because of Him. Because when we get to the point where we want to please and honor God, he will show you that your purpose is what your purpose is and although it might not look like anything to anybody else here's the truth about the matter when you start trusting God in every aspect in every part of your life God will blow your natural mind the truth you will become amaze you with the rooms made open for your calling, your gifts, and your ministry. God will take you to places that you never thought or imagined. So God is asking you to do something bigger than you. Because of who God is is evident that there's someone here today who has been sitting with fire shut up in their bones. Hallelujah. Not hearing, listening, or seeing God's purpose, God's plan, the dream, a passion, or the calling on your life. You've been struggling to believe it. You have been struggling to get to your yes. That's why Isaiah gives us these pointers. To make sure that we seek God's face and God's presence. Because when you are in the presence of God, things happen. Things change. 
God will give you the courage to stand yes, he will. and be the woman and be the man you are called to be. Even though you might not feel like you're capable of doing it. Yes, yes. Remember that the hand of God is upon you. Yes. And because of that, all things are possible. Yes. I came to declare to you that God has a yes in you. Yes. And he wants a yes out of you today. Yes. Think about it. Where would we be as a people if Moses a.k.a. Harriet Tubman had not had the courage to say yes? Where would we be if Nelson Mandela Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Malcolm X Mother Teresa and all the clerk that came before us yes. did not have the courage to say yes. yes. What kind of chaos will we have at every traffic intersection throughout the world if Garrett Morgan did not have the courage to say yes in his opposition to invent the traffic light? Yes. How wrinkled will our, car our cotton garments be if Sarah Boone did not have the courage to stand up against her naysayers and say yes, yes and invent the army board. Yes. Who would we have become if the endorsers of the 13th Amendment did not have the courage to stand up and say yes to abolish slavery for enslaved Africans? Yes. Where would we stand if the endorsers of the 15th Amendment did not have the courage to stand up and say yes to the law that says a, it's a citizen's right to vote yeah, yeah. and that shall not be denied. Yeah. Not on the count of race, color, or previous servitude. Where would we be if our ancestors did not employ their defiant hope expressed through the singing of spiritual? Right. How would we know our true history if the HBCUs did not research and contribute to the American history. How do we know about black excellence in music, literature, art, and politics that came through the Harlem Renaissance? Through forerunners like Bessie Smith, Jelly Roll Martin, oh, yeah. Louis yeah. Armstrong, yeah. Hugh Ellington, Josephine Baker, yeah. Paul Robeson, yeah. and all those talents that came yeah. after them. If they did not say yes. 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 What truth and what power narratives would we have and would have been written if Paul Lawrence Dunbar, James Weldon Johnson, Claude McKay, Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, Tony Morrison, Maya Angelou did not have the courage to write on and write on and write on and write on. And write on. Yes. And right on. Yes. And right on. Yes. And say yes. Right. What would be of the Major League Baseball mm. if Jackie Robinson well, did not have the courage to stand against all his opposition yes. and yes. say yes? yes. What pathways would have been made? for our young women, our young men, for our children and our grandchildren, all the young folks under 18 stand up. What pathway, stand up y'all, what pathway, what pathway, look around y'all, what pathway, what pathway would have been made for our Grandchildren, these young men, these young women, our great grandchildren, you all can be seated now. If the former president Barack Obama, the right, vice president Kamala Harris, Deputy Commissioner Krista Turner Charles, and Mayor Wanda Williams did not say yes to their call. Who? What? Where would we be? if Jesus was not obedient to the Father's call. If Jesus did not answer his call on his life. If Jesus 
cannot answer his call, Pastor. The Bible would have ended with the last verse in Malachi. Mm. That's scary. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Last verse in Malachi. There would be no gospel. No good news. No Jesus coming. And no Jesus coming again. Thinking this, Renee, we could not sing down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing, from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Oh, glory, glory to his name. Minister Jasmine William Cowell would have never written, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains. George Bernard would have never written on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that cross. I don't know about y'all. Where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners have slain. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm mighty glad. Huh? Joyfully glad that Jesus answered his call. You see, y'all, he chose the nails for us. He didn't have to do that. He chose the nails in his feet and in his hands. It should have been our hands and it should have been our feet where the nails were. But Jesus chose to answer his call. He suffered. He bled. He died on that old rugged cross. That we may be liberated from the penalty, the presence, and the power of sin. Jesus chose to answer his call, realizing that he was the only begotten son who died for the sin of mankind. That might have the glad news for us. That Jesus died for us. And I'm mighty happy that that's not the end of the story. <laughs> That's not the end of the story. The Bible says, and the songwriter declares, that he stayed in a borrowed tomb all day Friday. And he was there again all day Saturday. But I'm mighty happy, glad, and so glad to know that on the third day, the song was going back. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you just to think about, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. Now wrap your arms around yourself and say, yes, Lord. Say, 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 yes, Lord. Say, 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 yes, Lord. Y'all want to be Lord? Okay, help me worship God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord. Think about his presence now. Shekinah glory filling this place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul. Yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. 
There might be somebody here today. Keep on, keep on coming. Invite them in, invite them in. That does not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. The road is simple. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose again to free us and liberate us from the power and penalty and presence of sin. Let him be your savior. Say yes to him today. Your life will be reconstructed, redirected, and your purpose shall be fulfilled. And once your purpose is fulfilled, you'll never feel the same way again. God gave you a purpose for the building of his kingdom on this earth. So I implore you, I beg you, I ask you deeply with every aspect of my being to say yes to the Lord. To say yes, Lord Jesus. Yes to the depth. Are there any yes, Lord, folks in the house today? You may not know the Lord in the heart of your soul. If in fact you have never said yes to the Lord, won't you come? Won't you come? And take the hand of one of these young men. Let's permeate that with the yesness for God. Yes. Or you might church. I said yes one time, but I haven't been in church to walk out my sanctification. I need to come back. I'm a little backsliding, but the backsliding ain't little, y'all. So why don't you come? Come back and say yes, Lord. Let him reconnect you. Let God restructure you. Let God repurpose you. Or maybe you're looking for a church home. And you are the home where the Bible is the center of everything that you do. Bible teaching, Bible believing folks right here at Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church. If in fact you don't have a church home and you'd like to join this body of believers, why don't you come? Why don't you come? If you feel the urge to come on up, come on to it. If you don't, if you'd like to meet somebody in the back of the church, you can do that at the end of service. But don't be scared. God will give you, Jesus will give you the courage to stand up yes, Lord. and say yes, Lord. Church home, if you come on, give God praise for the word today. We want to give you a lot of opportunities, man. Come to me at the service. If you want to dedicate your life, if you dedicate the chat, if you're watching, uh, if you want to be saved today, why don't you come? Why don't you come? Listen, can we just miss you for just one, one second here? I want to call my brother Rick Banks up real quick. And come on, Rick Banks, real quick. Amen. Amen. His wife's going to be having some surgery, and we want to make sure we pray for him. Amen. 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 Come on, brother. Brother, Deacon Megan, so if you would come, and then uh, Deaconess Angela, I mean, Deaconess uh, Diane, won't you come stand for, for, for uh, his wife today? Amen. And let's look to the Lord together. How many of y'all have been healed after the church has been praying? Amen. 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 Let's look to the Lord. Our Father and our God, uh, we say yes to your will. And you are our healer and our savior. 
I pray for this beloved brother and his, and his beloved wife today that you would bring her to healing. Give her the best doctors, the best attendees. Uh, let the medicine do its, its work in a, an expedient way. But we're trusting in you for healing today. I pray, God, that the surgery will be successful. I pray that as you come down from the other side, heal, restore. We're going to let everybody know that Jesus did it. And we're going to thank you in advance for the healing. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we come in time in his name. Every heart said again. Right into our church covenant. Amen. Brother Sean is going to come and lead us. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for Brother Sean. Let's all stand together for the church covenant. He's able to do just what he said he could do. All right. Yeah. My name is Sean Williams, and I'm going to be reading the covenant. Amen. As we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, and having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels and ministers of the church, most solemnly and joyfully share the covenant with one another and with one body. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in the Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in our knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote us prosperity and spirituality, to sustain the worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the existence of the church, the relief of the
May the grace of God and the sweet, 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 sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest in our reconstructed, redirected, repurposed bodies, minds, and souls. Henceforth, now, and forevermore. And all of God's children will sing together.